Welcome back to another episode of New Steeple. Same people. This is a podcast where we talk to you about why we do church and kind of how we do it and give you a little bit of a background into all the nuts and bolts, right? That's right. I don't We've know. got a new uh, person with us today. That's right. And, and this this is the guy that makes it all happen right here. It's Greg Janes. Uh, he's our, one of our director of digital outreach. He's He's a guy who makes us look good. And so I just want you to introduce yourself. Tell us kind of who you are, what you do. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on y'all's podcast. Um, I'm normally behind on the other side, That's so right. um, I'm not opposed to being in front of it, but I'm normally behind it. But um, so like you said, I'm Greg Janes, and I actually uh, have a video production company called Mix It Up Media, um, but I have been attending Johnson Street since I came here in... Oh, I graduated high school in 2009 and went through the campus center and everything and have always been involved and found my passion for uh, media and everything and then did my own business. But then I started incorporating that with how can I help Johnson Street out? And so a uh, quick story over the last four or five years, started doing more work and kind of coming on and kind of helping with, um, I guess, media, if we want to bundle that in right. sometimes stuff gets into that that I don't actually do, but a lot of the design and uh, camera work and photos yeah. and social media and stuff like that, um, that's a passion and I feel like a talent that I have and I wanted to be able to use that for the kingdom. And so I was blessed to be able to help Johnson Street over the last several years and continue that. So. Yeah, you've got a great eye for things and you've got a way of um, helping us tell a story that I think has really helped us over the last several years. So we're glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And so in our last episode, we talked about, uh, you know, crafting, putting together a worship service. And so we thought it would uh, be good to maybe go even a little bit further uh, today and, and talk about, you know, creating a whole atmosphere yeah. or, you know, kind of an environment that is conducive to connecting people with, with God. Yeah. And this is something that, that you may, it may be more subliminal unless you're paying attention, but some things are a little bit more obvious, you know. Like, um, you know, one particular service a while back, we lowered the lights in the middle of one of our songs and it stayed lower just a little too long to where people started to get uncomfortable. And, and afterwards, I had some people say, so why were the lights down for so long? And really what I found out is that people just want to know why, you know, and granted, we may not know why we do some of the things, but I, when it comes to our environment here, there's a lot of thought that goes into that. So that's what, that's what I thought we could talk about today is, is the environment of our worship service. So uh, I wanted to talk quickly about the fact that, that um, whenever, uh, right before COVID hit, we wanted to, to change a little bit of our auditorium. We, wanted, we used to have a multi-level stage. Do you, were you here whenever that was here? I think I came and interviewed when it was like that, okay. but then it changed like a week after we moved here. Right. So the original setup was was basically a, um, it was kind of even, I think, with the wall, and there was just one little area where where people would, would walk up these stairs and they would be doing their sermon, the singing, and communion. You had two big podiums there. One was the communion podium, and one was the uh, worship and the sermon podium. And then uh, several years later, they added a little section, and then they even added a, a little stair kind of section that jutted out. Yeah. Well, it's hard to do a lot of things whenever your stage <clears throat> isn't flexible. So we are growing with our young families, and we wanted a place where our kids could, you know, uh, do plays and, and do some fun things. So we basically ripped it all out and put a flat level stage on there and and then COVID hit right. which was kind of you know I don't know if that was good planning on our part but we had a lot more space right. to do some fun things so when y'all saw that um, when it came comes to kind of crafting the service uh, crafting the environment what is some of the things that you saw and uh, you know how was it was it like great, there's a great, great big space to do some things with, or what? What were y'all seeing? Um, uh, for me, I, you know, kind of like, I kind of got thrown in here right as COVID hit, and, you know, we were very fortunate uh, in the fact that Johnson Street had already been, been live streaming 
um, maybe a year or two yeah. uh, before yeah. COVID even happened. Um, so we were kind of ready to, to go with that when people were, um, you know, had to stay in their homes. But we, we did want to kind of create this environment when they were only watching on their, their TVs or on their phones or computers um, to where they could have uh, more connection with people and feel like the, the screen was just kind of an extension of their own home. Um, so we tried some different things. Uh, I think we started with, uh, we had some like white uh, pillars, boxes that we could manipulate and stack in different arrangements and have lights in them. And, and I think that was even planned before COVID even happened. Yeah, and this is where Greg really kind of came in. And when you saw kind of the, what we had to deal with, and since you were kind of really one of the people in charge of our <coughs> streaming, what, what did you see and what were you wanting to do? So... Um, First off, like, before this, like, there is, like, creative and design that, like, I want to help with. But also, I strongly believe that it it is a, what, how am I saying? God is creative. And he has designed things in nature for us to experience him and his spirit and everything. And so, God is the ultimate creative person being that we have and so he's created stuff to better uh, experience him and everything and so I think that that can be put into uh, how we design a stage how we design uh, our live streams and everything I don't think that's just a human element I think that is found in how we are designed as humans from the very right. start so right. let me preface with that um, but that big open space allowed us to imagine how can we get people more involved um, with worship um, and how can we um, make this almost a reflection of what our lives are uh, outside of this building. And yeah. so kind of going fast forwarding a little bit real quickly, we had um, there were some. Uh, events happening in the world, and so we wanted to have a prayer night um, and discussion night um, with several different ministers around our uh, city of San Angelo. Mm -hmm. And so we invited them, but we didn't want them to just come up and talk straight from the podium and just be like speaking almost, not necessarily down, but you know, like at people. We wanted this to be a place to have conversation and everything. Right. And so we're like, where, 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 did, where does conversation happen? It happens in the living room. So let's put some couches up there. Let's put some chairs um, different stuff. And so we provided that opportunity, put some, you know, lamps and everything to make it living room feeling. Um, and that night was a huge success. We had a lot of great feedback on we, the audience felt really engaged. Yep. Um, they felt like they were part of the conversation because of that environment that we had created. Um, and so we just kind of continued to roll with that right. and think like, hey, this kind of fits our natural environment a little bit better um just with if you visit our, our church in person you know that like it's it's white it has big pillars a lot of crown molding and pretty stuff. industrial i mean it's, institutional yeah. right. right and so like the white boxes and the lights like kind of was jarring a little bit they were awesome but we were trying to figure out like how do we incorporate this but like we started putting furniture in there and it kind of fit living room theme and then so we kind of started thinking like well we want to encourage people to have these conversations and this dialogue, not just in church or in Sunday morning classes, but to feel like these conversations need to be happening in the places where we spend most of our time. Right. And that's the living room. Mm -hmm. And so there was rhyme and reason and thought process behind that to maybe subconsciously every Sunday for people to feel comfortable by seeing couches and chairs up there to be like, Hey, we can have these conversations in our living room um, and everything like that. Yeah. And, and they're, they're, <coughs> functional too in right. that and uh, one thing that we'll talk about maybe in a minute is you know having our praise team on stage um you know now the praise team could just you know sit there when they're not singing instead of having to take time to you know walk across that big long stage and uh, exit and then come back up later so they're they serve multiple purposes for sure yeah so right now we've got a kind of a living room set on stage it, it's and it's still not huge you know it's it's not a big Spa right. It's it's encompassing a smaller space of the big larger space. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember whenever we got lights in the back on the walls, you know, 
we had some, you know, some of our members were just saying, what is, what are these? Are we, what's happening? You know, is this is now a production. And I'm like, it's always been a production. You know, we're, we're producing something for God here, but you know, the lights give us texture, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. we can change colors and yeah. um, it gives us different feels for it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it plays into like, just think about like things that like, again, I'm going to go back to like what God creates. Like, he, he made trees green for a reason. He made the sun yellow, yellowish and stuff for diff, like, it gives you different vibes and different feelings and it, it naturally comes in and affects our emotions and the way we think. And so like, that's like, you can prove that like colors do that. And so there is aesthetic design, but then there also, it helps transition us to the theme or the vibe that we're wanting to, you know, feel that day with, your songs and your sermon and everything to help transition that. So like for one um, instance, like when we have our kids time, we put more of the rainbow brighter colors right, and stuff because right. that helps us think and get into the mind of like, okay, this isn't necessarily a, like in-depth serious topic. This is going to be a little bit more fun, playful, and it transitions our minds to then flip right. to the next page and be like, okay, this is kids time. This is where we're going to be with our children or mm -hmm. the children sitting next to us and stuff. And so very subtle, right? But it, it, it helps our mind to be able to get into that moment that we need to be in to fully experience what the Spirit's about to reveal to us. Yeah, and, it, and one other change that we made that, that was interesting that I kind of pulled the trigger on, so you can blame me, was our, our, our baptistry. And if you notice, our baptistry now, it's got a nice stone wall to it, and there's lights back there, and... And sometimes you'll see whenever someone is baptized, whenever they come out of the water, the lights will turn to white. It's very subtle, you know, that you'll see. But I remember whenever I first came here, there was the, a very small opening for the baptistry and a very large red curtain. I don't know if you remember oh, that. No, I didn't see that. And the, the very last time, I've, I kinda, I kind of, I've been noticing the motor on the curtain had been f struggling and, and I remember the very last time it happened, <laughs> they were up there and the curtain went like this far. And so they were having to stick their head out to, to talk. And I, and I told, you know, one of our guys on staff, I said, oh, no, this can't happen. So I thought, why is our opening so narrow if baptism is one thing that we hold so dear? So we widened it out and, and made, it, made it a centerpiece and Focus. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why we did that, but we incorporate the lights in there, and I think it's kind of cool right? Whenever, whenever it works out. And so, like, little side note, like, this isn't just, like, new stuff, like, within <laughs> right. the last year we've done. Like, stages are raised because, like, when churches originally were happening, they were getting so big and, so, like, people in the back couldn't see the person talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they made the, the decision to build a platform or a stage so that the people in the back or wherever you're sitting could hear them and see them. And so they did that to accommodate and to be able to make everybody who's attending be able to hear and right. be part of the service right. and draw them in. And it wasn't like, oh, we don't need to do that. Like they were like, okay, that makes, that makes sense. Let's right. do that. So like from the very early on, like the stage was a representation of like setting the... Um, place for people to like view and take that take in what is being said so. so 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 jeff i want to talk about praise here in a second but i remember some of those early videos that we took the early streams of our church was just a single person with a blank white wall behind them and all you could hear is that person and i remember thinking man if we're going to be doing this every sunday and our audience is going to be watching we we're going to need to up that a little bit. And I remember we had conversations about what that would look like. So, so talk a little bit about why, why we decided to go ahead and have more people on stage. You know, when, when uh, COVID hit and we were confined to our homes, um, there was an interesting time to, uh, to have uh, worship services. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd, we'd bring a skeleton crew up and, and, you know, sometimes we'd pre-record it you know, like on a Friday or Saturday, and sometimes we would do it uh, live. But yeah, when it's just one person up on this big, empty stage, um, it can just feel a little uh, dead, you know, and, and like I'm not really connected. And, and Two-dimensional. So, 
Yeah. That's and what I see. So having, you know, and, and I mean, the Bible tells us to uh, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We're supposed to uh, sing to each other. And, and so, you know, normally when it's just one song leader up there, it's almost like everybody singing to him and him singing to everybody. Mm-hmm. But if, you know, I would love to get our pews and get rid of them and, and turn our, you know, get chairs in there and turn everybody aside so we can actually see each other. So we're not just singing to the back of people's heads. Um, but, you know, having, you know, four or five, eight people up to, to help lead that time of worship and, and singing, um, you know, we just wanted people at home to to really feel like, oh, there's more people here involved than, than just me and one other person. And that's something that we were not used to. So, you know, whenever we kind of gathered back, mm-hmm. we even had some folks were concerned, you know, because typically, you know, Churches of Christ aren't, we're not really into any type of, of a formal presentational music, like a solo or even a choir. You know, it's really because we want everyone to be involved. Mm -hmm. And so some of, you know, some of our, our thinking may lead us to, to, to a place where, Oh, are the people on stage? Are they just performing to us? (laughs) And what I would say is no, I mean, we're all together. Yeah. And, and, you know, our, our heritage and our tradition is, you know, singing acapella with multiple voice parts and so why not have somebody leading each one of those parts? Right. And, you know, having a female soprano lead the female sopranos in the room so they can hear their part and uh, be able to sing along. And when you see it now, you see multiple people, and it really has it has a whole different feel. And, you know, in, in what you do, has that been helpful to the look? And, I mean, is that difficult to mix and all that? Uh, I... I think it's been very helpful um, to just see different age groups, different ethnicities, different genders represented on stage. Yeah, because that's who uh, we are. Right. And so that um, a lot of times unless we're able to see people that look like us or act like us or represent us, then we're a little hesitant to like feel like we're included or that right. we can do that. We kind of need to see somebody take that role first. Um, and so that allows that to be able to encourage that to happen and for people to be like, hey, I could I could do this or I could be a part of this church. Not necessarily like to be on praise team, but they could be like, oh, there's a, there's a 25-year-old up there that's in college that's helping with this, like, okay, this person goes there. I feel like they have a group that might include me or welcome right. me in this church or a 65-year-old or what, whatever that looks like. Um, it allows that opportunity. So yeah. that's a little not necessarily what we're talking about, but it kind of fits. Well, that's part of the environment, yeah. right. though, I think. I right. mean, you know, we, we want an environment that kind of reflects, you know, a little bit of who we are, but also reflects a lot of God's glory and kind of, you know, we can't look at God as as this stuffy being who just wants it. You know, he is he created a lot of different things, mm-hmm. and he and he still he still I I believe enjoys it when for his children, you know, think a little bit creatively and differently, and and to see an environment that that is is inclusive of, of everybody you just mentioned. You know, I, I think it speaks a lot to who we are, and and it lets people know that hey, we're we're here for one another. Mm-hmm. You know, we're open and available and accessible, and uh, that's what I see. And that's I think that's that, that's what you guys try to do whenever you're looking into what it looks like on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and you know, we all know that our world has changed, mm-hmm. um, and you know, the things that we, the decisions we were making. At first, um, you know, as far as our the way we look on a live stream, uh, may have been geared more towards you know just our, our members who were all confined to their homes, um, but you know live streaming is not going anywhere, um, and so we want to continue to uh, you know put our best foot forward and, and including uh, those people who are, are at home and and making them feel a, a part, and, and so there may be things that happen in the in the room uh, that may not be specifically for the people in the room, uh, but, you know, they need the understanding that, hey, this is for our members or our visitors who are, are joining us online. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, one thing that um, we have kind of transitioned to saying here uh, since uh, 2020 and COVID and doing, like, all that was um, kind of emphasizing um, you're all part of the family, no matter if you're here or at home. Right. Um, and so we don't want to just make uh, the person sitting in the pew comfortable um, and invited to that space, but people that are viewing it that may not ever get a chance yeah. to step foot in our building. Um, for example, um, we may have, or not we, we do have people that are firefighters or paramedics or nurses or doctors or police officers that have positions or jobs that physically cannot be here Sunday mornings. And so they may only, they may have to watch it our service delayed right. um, or at a different time during the week because they are working during that time and they may not have the opportunity or the choice to switch their time of work. And um, I'm very thankful for the work and their service that they do. And so let's mm -hmm. meet them where they are right. because if I was in a car wreck on Sunday, I would hope that those people would be there to be yeah. able to help take care of me. So um, there is that scenario. And then there's scenarios of um, – people just being older or they might be sick or they might be handicapped yep. and they can't get out and physically come to our buildings. So why would we then just say like, Oh, we're not going to provide a way for you to experience this. And we've, we've kind of made ways for them to experience it by doing like cassette tapes or like <laughs> CDs. So we were right. doing it before, but we just added visual element of video to it. Um, and so it's like, well, we've been doing this. We just added a different element to right. it, a different medium to it. Um, and then the next example is people that may not even live in our, our town. They might be traveling or um, they might live in a different state or even a different country, like the Kids for Katali. Yeah, They watch and because they feel like they're part of our family. And it would be great if they're able to set foot in our building. We could actually hug them. But most likely, they're probably not going to be able to, right. unfortunately. Um, but they're still part of our family, and they might not have a church that they want that they're able to be part of over in Kenya. But they can say, like, "Hey, I'm part of a church. I'm part of Johnson Street," and that's that's the beauty of it. Is and I think it's speaking into God's uh, whole plan for everybody to be a family. This is allowing us to have that opportunity to expand and create grow our family outside of just these walls that we have yeah you know really it it is all about kind of shifting our thinking into a more a more proactive way of of being definitely because you know if you look at the at the early american movement you know west the west was the frontier and and when the frontier expanded so did churches gospel followed the frontier and i kind of look at at the online world as almost this new frontier and we don't have to go anywhere to 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 you know reach them we just have to i think plan a little bit mm -hmm. and and do everything we can on this end to try to make sure that that whatever that experience is that that people are seeing us for who we really are as much as they can without mm -hmm. being here but seeing us for who we really are and really hopefully through that environment they're going to see our message and, and we're definitely not <laughs> perfect at it. Uh, we're still we're still learning learning and growing. And I still get emails on a regular basis of, you know, I couldn't hear so-and-so this week online and things like that. So, uh, you know, we're still working it out. Um, but I think it's important for us to, to keep working it out. Yeah. So if in the future you start seeing some things on, uh, that may not necessarily be normal, typical, something you're accustomed to, uh, maybe the lights go down for a particular song or two. Maybe, you know, we, I've got, you know, I'm juggling fire on stage or something. No, <laughs> whatever we're doing, whatever is different, you know, the first thought should be, oh, I wonder who we're trying to reach today instead of, man, what's happening? <laughs> why is it so different? Right? Because there's always a reason of why we do some of the things that we do. Normally, there's always a reason. <laughs> Right. Any last things that you'd like to say? No, not that I can think of. Okay. Well, Greg, any words of wisdom to kind of usher us out here? Um, words of wisdom? Oh, man. Um, 
No, but I, I just want to re-emphasize, like, God is creative. Like, that's, like, we open the Bible and he says, in the beginning, God created. Like, it's, like, one of the first words he says is, cre- like, is created. And so, like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's right. what, ho- hopefully, we've been able to dive into that a little bit in here. Um, and it's not, we're, we're not just bringing in creativity to just bring in creativity. We're bringing it in for a purpose. Right. Um, and right. to help people um, of all types of uh backgrounds, ethnicities, genders, be able to experience the wonderful love of God. Right. Um, and that's been going on. If you think about it in your past, if you've, if you've attended church, it's pro- it, if you really sit down and dive in, like it's been happening for years, decades. You're, you just might be figuring out these new things because they might be sudden jumps of changes of adding live stream and video cameras and photos and social media. Like it's all new, but we've been doing it in different forms right. for years. That's right. And it's just a way to, again, connect and share and um, tell stories. Jesus was a storyteller. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's what we're reading in the Bible is we're reading a bunch of true stories and uh, stories that Jesus shared with his disciples and followers and everybody, he was telling stories and he set them up with saying what the scene looked like and who was there. And that's that helped people really understand what he was talking about. And that's that's kind of what we're doing. So Yeah, and you know, Paul talks about becoming all things to all men so that he might save some. I mean there's there's a reason that we we want to find an engaging atmosphere because we don't know who's coming in on Sunday right, morning. Right. And so we gotta do everything we can to try to meet that person where they are. So I really appreciate you being here, Greg. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. Amazing. Well, thanks for listening. I'm Scott. And that's... Uh, I'm Jeff. There you go. <laughs> and uh, we hope to see you next time on New Steeple. Same people. Bye.